All right, I got a pro casting tip for you. So as you can see right now, there's just all sorts of stuff behind me. There's no way I can make it traditional cast. This is a traditional fly rod, so can't really spay cast it. There's a giant indicator, flies that are weighted. So roll casting can be very difficult. So a lot of times if you can just get it out there a little bit, let it float downstream, have a place in mind, right? You know you wanna shoot it right about there. Once the line is taut and you've got about 30 feet dragging right downstream from you, just do what I call a slingshot cast and point the tip of the rod where you want the setup to go. And more often than not, it'll follow it and you'll make a nice cast. And that way you can fish a drift like this and not worry about getting stuck in the tree. So there's a little casting tip for you. There we go, there's another one. Oh, he's not happy. Oh, come on. Oh. Don't get under that tree. I want to get him on the reel. Are you kidding me? Oh, he's trying to get in, into that sticks. Can't let him do that. Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 Let's chill for a sec. All right, here is your unconventional fly fishing tip of the day. Now, this is a trout spay. Typically, this is a switch rod as well. That's why you see me casting it overhand a lot because I still suck at spay casting. Need to take a class? Anyway, I digress. So it's tougher, right, to do with this particular rod. However, this is unconventional. I've been swinging this run a lot, over and over and over, nothing. And then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna chuck this upstream and strip it down in kind of a panic type of strip. And sure enough, I hooked into a really nice fish. So, once you're done swinging a hole and you're ready to move down, just throw a cast upstream, strip it down, and you'll be surprised what happens. It's, it's unconventional, but it works. Watch. I'm gonna try a upstream cast with a spay rod. Oh, there we go, that worked. Did an upstream cast with the spade. Good fish. Oh, he's off. Dang, that was a good one. So there you go. There is your unconventional fly fishing pro tip of the day. Right, you can kind of see how the water is kind of rushing in here and then it slows down. Nice inside seam there, outside. And if it was sunny out, you'd be able to see there's a huge color change, right? It goes from kind of a light emerald to a deep emerald. That's because there's a drop off there. A lot of times there's fish hanging on, hanging out there in the drop off. So I'm gonna throw it up in kind of the fast current and let it drop off. I'm gonna start off with probably four or five feet from the first fly just to start prospecting this hole to see if there's any fish there. So that's kind of the strategy that I'm using um, going after these fish. So, line's cold, it's never, never quite wants to work right. So quick tip for you when you're casting these big double nymph setups with an indicator, water load. You'll find that you'll have far less tangles if you use that casting technique, casting these multi-fly setups out there. So water load and you'll have a much better experience.
There we go. Oh, nice. Ooh, got 4X tipping on. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Holy crap. Wow. Gonna have to fall on my face. Oh, wow. What a beautiful rainbow. Oh my God, that's huge. Fly fishing is hard. That is 100% a myth. It is not hard. If you put in the effort and practice and get quality gear, it doesn't have to be super expensive, quality gear, spend the time practicing, most of your hookups are gonna be 30 feet away. Fly fishing is not hard. So the other thing you wanna consider is what you're doing with your rod. My dad always taught me, rod tip up, rod tip up. Now in most cases, that's the right thing to do because essentially you want the rod to play the fish. You're far less likely to break it off if the rod is kind of bending and flexing as the fish runs. Some people will argue that if you have your rod tip up, they're more likely to jump. But you know, I kind of like it when they jump. So you can kind of use the rod tip to steer the fish wherever you want it to go. If it's going into some hazards or maybe out to the swift current, you can put some side, low side pressure on it to try to steer the fish into a better place where you can land it. Rod tip up, tight line, and you can use your rod to steer the fish along, especially if you're fishing in uh, smaller fisheries. So when it's time to put the fish in the net, don't be afraid to rear that rod way back. If you've got a good quality rod, it's gonna be able to flex enough to be able for you to lift your arm up over your shoulder, kind of back behind you and lead the fish right into the net. Beautiful red band. Wow. So can a fly rod really make a difference in casting? Does fly line really make a difference? The answer is a resounding yes on both. First, the fly line. You could have just a crappy reel, and this isn't a crappy reel, but it's an old school reel, Orvis Battenkill, but you can have an average reel in good fly line. It's gonna make such a huge difference when casting a fly rod. The other is the fly rod. The fly rod does make a difference. I designed this rod for the beginner in mind. Now it's also for the veteran fly fisher that wants a little less effort in casting. This is a medium fast action rod, very forgiving. 